Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video I'm going to talk through how I've completed this beagle puppy. This is Lola and Christmas of 2021 this was my Christmas present for my partner who had been asking for a puppy. So for Valentine's Day I thought I would attempt to draw this photo of Lola to gift to him. So if you ever see white paper over the drawing this is just me hiding the piece if I ever thought that he was coming into the room or walking past. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper and pencils that I've used but they are Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and I've also used a white Holbein pencil for the waxy highlights in the eye. So if you'd like to see any of my other work or progress photos please check out my Insta and I have pieces and cards available on Etsy so remember to like and subscribe and leave me a comment below and let's get started. So clearly the main part of this I wanted to speak about was those big blue eyes. So to begin with, I just made sure that I went in with a light dark sepia pencil and did the outline of the eye. So make sure to go in really lightly because if you go in too hard and you're not happy with the shape, it is really hard to get rid of the color that you've put down. And then you can see I've gone in with the white Holbein waxy pencil. So this will put down a wax resist in the really white areas of the piece. And you can also, once you have your white waxy pencil down, if color does go over that, you can just use a scalpel and really lightly scrape it off. So it is um, better to get those highlights sort of at the end of the piece. And then I went in with the blue colors to sort of outline the pupil and the iris to see where all the blue color was going to start. And then I used the warm gray one to put a base down in the pinker areas. Then for the pinky color, I used the beige red and went in really lightly. And then after you put down a couple of the colors, like the blues and the pink colors, you can go in with your white Holbein pencil and smooth it all down. So it always stays like a really smooth, smooth color. I also used some nougat to put the browner colors in and to highlight and accentuate some of those shadows. And the blue color that I used was the sky blue and the Prussian blue for the really bright, bright blue. And I also went in with some of the dark sepia around the very outline of the eye to get the really dark sort of shadows and then slowly blend the blue colors in from the outside in towards the middle. So you can see as well I'm also going around that white highlight so you want to make sure that you're not getting any color pencil into that white highlight in the top left corner of the eye. So this sort of thing I'll always work lightest to darkest so making sure to put in all of the lighter colors in the middle. So you can see sort of in the middle where it's the lightest blue color that's the color that I want to keep there so then you're just sort of building in the darker tones around the outside and from the pupil just underneath the highlight back into the middle. It's important just to pay attention to your reference photo and going in really lightly with your layers and slowly building up the tones. So to get that really marbled sort of white effect in the middle of the eye and the highlight, this is where I use the white waxy Holbind soft white pencil. So if you go in with your um, blue and pink tones and then glaze over with the soft white Holbein, it sort of makes it like a pastel sort of um, lighter color of the color that you've gone over. And this is what will make it sort of look glassy. And then you can go in with the darker colors around that and put in those little sort of shapes that you can see in the eye. And that's what will make the I seem really glassy and bright in certain areas and then you can also use the soft white Holbein to sort of put in little bits of white so if you dab it on the page some of the wax will sort of come off and create like a really white section. And then for the highlight I did go in with the sky blue really lightly and then go over with the white waxy pencil and blend it down to like a duller blue color and just making sure to pay attention to the reference photo because that's where you can see where all the darker and lighter colors are and the more that you're following it the closer it will be to looking realistic. So now I've started to add some of the fur around the eye. I think when you first sort of start putting in the fur around the eye 
I always find that I go in a lot lighter because it's really hard to find out and depict the values that you're going to need while you're only putting in sort of a small bit of fur. So I prefer to sort of go in lighter at the start and then I can always go back and darken it up when I start to put in more. So if I put in the ear and I feel like it needs to be a bit darker, we can go in a little bit darker. I think as well you also just need to trust yourself and really follow the reference photo. So in the eye, when you're sort of really close and you're only putting the eye in, you sort of look at it and think, this looks so weird and while it's sort of in the ugly stage and you don't have the darker values in there, you'll think it's not working. But just keep following your reference photo and making sure that you're putting all of the darker and lighter tones in where they're meant to be. It doesn't actually matter if you don't get the color right, it's more if you get the lighter and darker areas right on the animal. So for the brown sort of creamy fur um, on the ear and around the eye, I used a lot of the warm grey 1, warm grey 2, warm grey 3. Um, also a bit of nougat, a little bit of ivory in places and you can also see some purples, blues and pink colours in there so I did use the beige red, manganese violet, um, some burnt sienna in the, for the browner tones and the burnt ochre. So I really wanted this to be sort of a really light piece and make it really soft and um, light so because the fur on the top of the head is really white and the majority of her is white if I went into the brown colors and went in really deep it would sort of make it look really dark and the light in the brown wouldn't match the light in the white color if that makes sense so when it came to putting in the ears where the whiskers are I did go in with my embossing tool first and put in the whiskers so that when I go over the ears you would still still see the whiskers going into the ears so I did this beforehand before I started even working on the ears so if you're not sure about an embossing tool you can check out my leopard tutorial I'll go into a lot of detail about the embossing tool but it is just sort of like a hard metal instrument that you can get from most craft shops and it just indents the page so that when you go over it with color pencil you can see the line showing through so for the nose I went in with the dark sepia really lightly the same as the eye went in and outlined the darker areas and then started to build in all of the tones I used the same blues pinks and purple colors in the noses I did in the whole piece so making sure to follow the reference photo, putting in the highlights and the dark areas where you can see them. Again, using the soft whole line pencil to smooth down all of the colors and put in that wax resist and the white highlight areas on the nose. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about white fur because white fur is very difficult. It took me a long time to sort of get the hang of it. But I start by going in with the warm grey one just to put down a base colour. I also just pick sections of the fur that I'm going to do. So I don't go through and put the base colour everywhere. I just put it in small sections and start working on it a bit at a time like I would with any sort of colour. Then I use the warm grey one to put down a base. Then use the warm grey one again to depict some of those darker areas and then start to build in the warm grey two and then really looking at your reference photo you can see where there are, where's colour in there so you can see in the fur there's blues, pinks and green colours as well so that's where you'd start to glaze in some of your colours and when I say glaze I mean putting your pencil on the side and lightly shading over so you don't want to go in and make it look really bright and it have a really vibrant color you just want it to be sort of a shadow in it and help it sort of make different sections darker I then also started to work in some of the warm gray 3 in the darkest areas and also some of the beige red burnt ochre nougat and ivory colors to give it some more life but in the white fur you would sort of never go in with a really dark walnut brown or a dark sepia color you just build in the really light colors and make them darker with some of the pinks and blue colors along with the warm gray one warm gray two warm gray three it will make the shadows darker without having to add anything really harsh like a dark sepia or a walnut brown 
Finally, I went in and put in the little whiskers with the warm grey 2 and warm grey 3. Then left this for a day or two and came back and had a look at the values. So one of the things as well that I was thinking of doing was adding a shadow underneath the feet and the body. But I really did think that it sort of looked okay the way that it is. And I feel like if I added in even a light or darker shadow, it might have made it look a little bit darker and I wanted to keep it really nice and light and soft looking. So I think adding a shadow might have added a little bit more of a harsh edge to it, which I wasn't trying to go for. So let me know in the comments below if you feel like I did need a shadow or if you like it the way that it is at the moment. And I really hope that you liked this video. Remember to give it a like and subscribe and remember to check me out on Etsy and Insta and I'll catch you in the next video. Here is the final result. Keep drawing guys. Thanks.